Hello students, your instructor here, John Manila with another screencast. This one in InDesign, I set up a multi-page document, like a newsletter. So if I went to File, New, I want to click Document, I don't want to click anything else. And Number of Pages, that's obvious, let's just say I type in four, however many pages you want. Now, Facing Pages, I apologize for my daughter in the background, Facing Pages here, that's like if you want to have a magazine type spread, like a left to right kind of thing. We don't for our newsletter, we just want single pages at a time. So we'll make sure we uncheck facing pages and make sure that both these are unchecked. Uh, the width and the height. So the width and the height 8.5 by 11 inches, standard pages. Um, if you want to make it wide as opposed to tall, uh, especially if you're thinking about this newsletter maybe being an e-newsletter, so it would be read uh, over the web, you can just click this box to have it be wider than it is tall, but let's leave it this way for now. Number of columns, this is one thing nice about InDesign, you can set up um, these columns ahead of time, give yourself kind of a grid layout to work with. So let's just say I want a, um, I don't know, a three column grid format. The margin, um, we can go with half an inch, that's fine, that's good, and then bleed, so like the other tutorial and illustrator, the bleed you might want it to be let's just say 0.25 inches all the way around again that's if you want color or imagery let's say like the edge of a picture to extend beyond the edge of the page or I should say to the edge of the page what you need to do is you'd actually set that to go beyond the edge of the page in this case a quarter inch which is the bleed amount and then it's printed like on a page on a piece of paper that's larger than 8.5 by 11 and then what happens is it gets uh, trimmed down to the proper size 8.5 by 11 Anyway, leave the slug at zero. So we've got this going, that's good. Oh, the gutter here, in case you're wondering, that's the distance between the columns, and in this case, that's totally fine, we'll leave that alone. And then we'll hit OK, and we'll see, um, we'll just see one page at first, but we'll uh, look at the pages panel so that we can view all of our pages. So here we are, here's our one page. Notice there's a number of different colors going on. So the black, that's the trim, that's the actual size of the page. The red is the bleed, so again, if you have you know, color field or background colors or, or if you want a photo that you want like the edge to go off to the edge of the page, have it go all the way to the red. You can go beyond the red, that's totally fine, but you have to make sure it goes at least to the red. Then um, these pink and purple columns, <coughs> I'm sorry, pink and purple lines, these designate the columns that we had specified in the new document dialog. So that's that. Now, to see the other pages, what you could do, if you scroll down, you see here are other pages like this. Another way to really keep track of it nice and quickly and give yourself an overview while you're working on the document is go to the Pages panel here. And if you don't see it, you can always just go to Window, Pages, and it'll appear. So for our purposes, we're not going to worry about the master page up here. That's using templates and customizing things. If you have experience with that, you can certainly make use of that for this assignment. If you don't, don't worry about it. And then you, you can just double click on these pages and notice that the uh, page number will highlight in black. This will highlight. If we have any imagery, so let's say I go back to page one and I don't know, I'm just going to draw uh, a black rectangle across the middle. I can see that it shows up over here. Now if yours are smaller than this, and it's harder to see, in the pages panel, go to the panel menu, which is little lines up here. This might be off the screen, but you want to go down to panel options way at the bottom and then in here it says pages see how mine are set at extra large so that they look nice and big and get a better preview of what's going on um, masters you can leave those at smaller extra small because we're not going to use those in this document then hit OK and you know if I go here and let's say I'm going to make a green square or rectangle I always call them squares you can see now so at a glance I get information of where I am. You can drag this taller if you want to see all four at once. So that helps me be able to manage the document. So that's it. You save your InDesign file. Now real important, whether you're working in Illustrator or InDesign for your project, um, you're going to want to create a low res PDF to submit. So save your, if you're an Illustrator, save your .ai file, high res, all that editable fonts. If you're an InDesign, save your high-res InDesign file .indd with all of its fonts and everything like that uh, and high-res imagery. But then save or export a low-res PDF. It'll can include all of your pages and I can I will uh, send you instructions on how to do that. So again, PDF for submitting. That's all I got. Thank you. Goodbye.